Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and today we're going to do something a little bit different but still related to our regular content. You see, Warhammer Fantasy is a very old setting. Many deities have been established but not many have been killed off permanently. Instead, they have just merely been forgotten about. While some have indeed died after the end times, we're not going specifically towards the Age of Sigmar timeline. Instead, we're going to focus on Warhammer Fantasy and we might draw some parallels with Age of Sigmar and Warhammer 40,000, but without further ado, let's begin. When we generally think about Chaos, most of us will think about the four main brothers. Khorne, the Blood God, Zanesh, the Lord of Excess, Nurgle, the Lord of Plague, and of course, Zinch, the Lord of Magic. These are commonly the most represented deities of Chaos throughout every setting of Warhammer. It doesn't have to be just fantasy, but also includes Warhammer 40k and Age of Sigmar. Though many of us know very well that there are indeed other Chaos Gods. Some of them have been in the other settings and some of them have not. Some examples that we do have are of course Malal, later known as Malice, the renegade Chaos God who seeks to destroy the other Chaos Gods. He stopped being canon a long time ago but has recently been mentioned through his forces in the Warhammer 40k universe during the fall of Cadia to be in fact where the Sons of Malice reappeared. They unfortunately did not have a lot of time within that series but that still means that they're still fairly canon. Keep in mind that yes, Malal is a copyrighted name but they had renamed him Malice in an effort to keep some of that lore going even if they couldn't use anything established like the demons and Malal's proper name. Before his sort of resurgence, Malal was replaced by two other minor Chaos deities. One was known as Nekoho the Doubter. This is the Chaos God of Unbelief, an oxymoron throughout a lot of Warhammer-based religions through various different settings, as we know that you need to be worshipped to be empowered as a sort of god. The other is of course Zuvasin the Undoer, a Chaos God of Destruction who seeks to undo the things others have done or seek to do. Essentially how this worked is that both Zuvasin and Nekoho took aspects of Malice or Malal, whichever way you wish to call him, and became gods in their own right. Now, how it works in most recent time is we've not really heard about them in a long, long time. In fact, Zuvasin has not been mentioned since first edition Warhammer Fantasy roleplay, although reference to him could be so unknown that he could be mentioned in recent times. Nekoho, however, has been mentioned in Age of Sigmar, specifically in the short story Auction of Blood, where the revelations of Nekoho, a book known as the Light of Doubt, had some mention throughout that short story. This means that, of course, Nekoho seems to be coming back in Age of Sigmar. Of course, there is also Hashut. This is the god of ash and bulls, who seems to have been birthed or at least empowered by the Chaos Dwarves, the Dawi Zar, throughout the Warhammer Fantasy universe, but has recently been mentioned a few times throughout Age of Sigmar as they are building up to the eventual Chaos Dwarf release for Age of Sigmar, and it seems that he is still very much active within the mortal realms. This is good because, well, he's a fan favorite god and it's always nice to see that type of god come back. And lastly, we have three deities known as the Chaos Gods of Law, sometimes just known as the Gods of Law, but what is truly important to note is that they appeared into existence at the same time as the Chaos Gods, and what little law surrounds them has more or less seen their interpretation of law and order to be that of the strictest possible, in a very similar sense of a true chaotic good, where they're trying to do good, but in the same way also doing evil by it. It's kind of hard to interpret it fully as, of course, when it comes to the Chaos Gods of Law, they don't follow a typical aspect when it comes to well, normal god interpretations in the Warhammer setting. As I said, there are three different deities. Illuminas, the Master of Light. Then there was Arianka, which it was never really established as to what exactly her powers were. And finally there is Sulkan, the father of vengeance, often worshipped or revered, better yet said, by the very fanatical witch hunters in their very debatable just court proceedings. Just exactly how canon the Chaos Gods of Law, well, that's always been debated, as there has always been rumours of their eventual return, especially with Sulkin receiving a few mentions here and there, even in Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th edition. So that's all a decent number of deities for Chaos, whether it's Chaos True or actual Chaos Order. 
But what if there is one more, a type of chaos which focuses around purgatory, the middle ground between order and true chaos? Well, it seems if we go back a decent amount of time into Warhammer Fantasy history, there might have been such a deity. You see, quite a decent amount of time ago, Games Workshop used to have a comic book publication known as Warhammer Monthly. How this used to work is you would get a few different stories every month, but they would be continuing until the end of a specific book. Here, Malice Darkblade did feature quite often as this is where he started becoming very, very popular throughout the Warhammer franchise. Malice had a series of comics, or books as they're often referred to in the series, and he did go through a lot, everything revolving around Zarkan and so on, but there was a particular time throughout this book series which really needs to be talked about. You see, during the Darkblade Chronicles, a specific event happens where after Malice has been fighting against some enemies, he is transported into another realm. This took him to a place within the realms of chaos, but not to one of the realms that we already know of. Instead, this was a rock, a otherness. As you can see in the artwork, this is an area, a realm which is in the fashion of the Eight-Pointed Star. And there are demons here. Demons who are guarding an insanity which is inside the realm itself. Here in the center is a foul palace of chaos, and at its heart there is a child god that screamed away for eternity. Now many of us do want to talk more about this god, because it is a rather interesting curiosity, but we need to talk about a few things beforehand, as it leads to a lot of speculation. Malice arrives in an unconscious state, and there are a few people discussing his appearance. In fact, it's only when they claim that he'll start to scream, most likely from pain, when he actually awakens and threatens those around him. Only to find rotten corpses, undead, but even then, they're not true undead. After threatening them, he finds that there are not two, but a whole legion of them, doomed for eternity in this strange chaos place. A cursed domain for lost and cursed souls, even referred to as Hell. They inform him that this is the domain of the Chaos Child, and that Malice may seek him for answers, but he will never be allowed to leave this place. Of course, this is still Malice Darkblade, so he thinks otherwise. What's very interesting here is one spirit says, if you're lucky, you'll be allowed to die, which is very curious considering that, as far as we're aware, Malice is now doomed for eternity here. Unless dying will allow him to rot like all the others, but even then it doesn't really answer any question, does it? Nonetheless, Malice moves towards this dark palace, slaying any guard that stands in his way, though these seem to be some demonic entities. Even then, it's not a demon that we've seen before, then again we don't really get to see them too well. They look like a mixture of the old type of Bloodthirster, possibly demonettes too. Unless this is some weird take on some demonic Chaos Marauders, they might be entirely new demons that were never established before. Nonetheless, with Malice moving further on, he eventually does come to meet the Screaming Godchild, who does introduce itself as the Godchild. No other context is provided. Malice would then begin conversations with it, saying that the dam called it the Screaming Godchild, and all it simply replies is it has been known to scream. And it seems that when it does scream, it is not a good sign. We find out that this realm, Otherness, was created in the first days to be his nursery and his cage. With ancient demonic wardens, older than the elements, guard the walls to keep him in. Interestingly enough, this being does tell him that while he might look like a child, he does have power. He offers to answer the questions that Malice has, and for that they must ride, where, interestingly enough, with but a snap of a finger, he summons a two-headed Chaos Dragon. The only reason why I believe he summons this dragon is because it incredibly startles Malice Darkblade, so it must have appeared within a blink of an eye. Together they rode, stopping at a location, a gate, one of four in otherness. These act as portals that will lead you to where your heart desires. 
As we found out before, there are four great demons guarding the entrances to Otherness. One is of course here, and it will not even notice Malice, but is here to keep the screaming godchild in. This is very interesting. Of course, if we look at the demon, it looks to be that of a Lord of Change. At least that's what the representation here shows. It could have been anything else. For all we know, this could be an exalted Chaos Fury. Again, we are told the fact that this is a cursed place, as once you enter in through the gates, you can never leave. Of course, Malice did not enter through such a gate, and was teleported in through that mystical orb. With Malice reaffirming himself that he is going to leave, and the Screaming Godchild happily informing Malice that should he try to leave, the Gate Demon will crush him. Malice informs him of how he arrived, and leaves. With, of course, the Screaming Godchild realizing what's happening, and letting out a scream that Malice will never forget. This is, as far as I'm aware, the last time that we hear about the Screaming Godchild. So, who and what exactly is the Screaming Godchild? We get very, very little information, and a lot of questions do rise from his appearance. Well, first we look towards Otherness. This is a realm lost in space and time, where demons, and it's not specified which demons, are there to keep the insanity in. Clearly, this acts as some sort of prison throughout the Warhammer Fantasy universe, perhaps another piece of the Realm of Chaos itself. The fact that it's shaped like a eight-pointed star means, of course, that this is a Realm of Undivided, perhaps a collaborative effort by all the Dark Powers in an effort to keep this screaming godchild in. A prison by all meanings of the word. This could easily be because the screaming godchild is in fact another Chaos Deity, or something far more ancient and powerful. The lore of Warhammer Fantasy mostly puts the Chaos Gods as existing as long as space and time themselves. It could be that this creature, this godchild, could have existed at the very dawn or even before time even existed. Speculation does of course point it to it being a being of chaotic nature, especially as when Malus gets close to him, you will notice that he's wearing a pendant, that of a eight-pointed star, that of Chaos Undivided. Could it be that this is a sort of Chaos God of Undivided, the balance which holds the realm of chaos together and gives it shape and form? Clearly, a God of Chaos Undivided would be a threat to all other Chaos Deities, even the Big Four, which is why in his infancy a realm, Otherness, was created to be his nursery and his prison, where he'd be able to grow, but would not be able to act. Again, if we go back to the Otherness, we can see a little shape of four demons on four specific points. And we know that each of these points are the gates themselves, which lead out of the Otherness, which are guarded by greater demons. One of them, the only one that we get to see, looking very, very much like a Lord of Change. What if each of the four demons are themselves greater demons of the Big Four? A Lord of Change for Zinch, a Keeper of Secrets, for Sinesh, a bloodthirster for Korn, and a great unclean one for Nurgle. What if they're keeping this screaming godchild in, as they know its true power and it might upset the balance of the great game? There is of course constant speculation that there are indeed many Chaos Gods, and it's not out of the question to see a Chaos God of Undivided. We, in fact, have seen many speculations in the past about the Great Beast where a being of Chaos Undivided could take over the realms of Chaos, and eventually lead to the destruction of not just the universe, but the multiverse itself. But all that we do know is obviously this Screaming Godchild is extremely powerful, and for that he has been imprisoned. I wonder exactly why, and maybe we might see more information in the future. Who knows? Games Workshop do like to go back, and sometimes expand on very old lore. We have seen that in most recent times, especially with the resurgence of Grand Café in the Warhammer Fantasy universe. And perhaps he is being mentioned in most recent times through a different medium. The Total War Warhammer series has been delving into some of the most obscure lore possible, sometimes when jumping into introducing new units, faction mechanics and stuff like that. 
and we are fully aware that there is going to be a rather interesting plot point throughout the third and final game of the series. Now, we don't know exactly what that plot point is, but what if the Screaming Godchild has something to do with it? More so with a plot point than anything else, and these are my reasons. First up, we have a small excerpt from a gaming article, a interview that I believe was with PC Gamer. This stated that the title will feature a brand new grand campaign that tasks players, quote, with saving or exploiting the power of a dying god. Many of us, including myself, originally thought that the Dying God could be Daz, one of the Kislevi gods, mainly because the poem at the intro of the announced trailer was a poem to Daz, though that can actually be something else. The Kislevites could be reciting that poem as they knew very well they were going to meet with Chaos Demons, and they wished for Daz's light to protect them. Especially since we are aware now that Daz does feature in the Kislevite faith mechanic, so he wouldn't be dying and still be able to grant boons, powerful boons, to his followers. Next, in the official Kairos Fate Weaver blog, we find out that Kairos had been stranded outside the realms of chaos by the scream of a dying god. This means that this dying deity, whoever it may be, is so powerful it can even stop one of the most powerful greater demons in the Warhammer Fantasy setting. This god could act as a sort of catalyst, which will eventually, when he passes, trigger the end times, where the balance of the universe itself has been completely thrown off, with the forces of chaos now throwing everything they have at the other forces, now not so bothered by the great game. It could even be that the Screaming Godchild could be the ancient figure who desires nothing less than to wield supreme power. We know this from the official Steam page. While many point for that to be Bellacore, it could be that the champion mentioned in that very same mention could be Bellacore. See, if the Screaming Godchild is indeed some sort of Chaos God of Undivided, then what's to say that he won't reach out to one of the very few Chaos Demons of Undivided in an effort to make him his champion? Bellacore could then choose to serve or pretend to serve the Screaming Godchild in an effort to get revenge on Korn, Nurgle, Sunesh, and Zinch. It could be very far-fetched, but I don't see this completely out of the realm of possibility, especially since older lore has been tapped in for a lot of Total War Warhammer, and it's very possible they could be trying to bring this god back into canon only just to kill him off. Or make him the central plot point, as saving or exploiting the powers works like that really well. The Chaos Gods could choose to exploit him to further push themselves into the great game, Bellacore could choose to serve him in an effort to get stronger, and the good powers, Cafe and Kislev, could be trying to save him. Now, you might be wondering why they would try and save him, and it's rather simple. Something along the lines of the enemy of my enemy is my ally. Keep in mind that other Chaos Gods, such as Illuminas and Arianka, Sulkin, those have been worshipped by mortals. Now, I don't believe that people would actively worship the Screaming Godchild, but rather see it this way. Better to have balance and the Chaos Gods fight among themselves because of it, than turn around and destroy everyone else. Admittedly, this is wild speculation, but it is not completely out of the question, and it would be an interesting way to reintroduce a deity, very much like Age of Sigma is trying to reintroduce Nekoho the Doubter. But what do you think about the Screaming Godchild? Do you believe that this could be a deity returning? Do you think that this is an actual deity of Chaos, a Chaos God of Undivided, or something more sinister, something that the Chaos Gods themselves fear? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and let's start a bit of a discussion. A massive shout out to my Discord community, as first up, they got me reinterested in this deity, and second off, I needed help trying to find a copy of this comic book online, as it is very difficult to find. There is a Spanish version, which I had access to, but the Spanish stuff, when it comes to translation with Games Workshop, a lot of stuff does get lost in translation. This was very common with the tabletop game itself, where rules could be interpreted in different ways just because of shoddy translation. But with that, my friends, we've come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like, or even subscribing to the channel, as it really does help us out.
In the description section below are various links to different social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram and Discord. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games where you could buy loads of hobby based products, not just Warhammer, for 10 to 25% off. Making a purchase using that link and also our special code which is also in the description supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to our higher level of content. A big thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Prince and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Yule, VS Fasan, Aaron Whitman and Shaggy for subscribing to us at our king level, honestly we can't thank you all enough. And lastly, a big thank you to all of you for liking, sharing and commenting on these videos. Honestly, it's because of you guys that the channel has been growing at such a great pace lately, so we can't thank you all enough. But with that my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and we shall see you all again very very soon. Have a good day.